Hello, journeymen, journeywomen. This is A Hero's Journey with Dr. D, the podcast. This podcast was designed to inspire, to encourage, to educate, and to motivate, helping you get beyond your first move and creating a better mindset today. Now, for an entertaining video version of this episode, along with many more at my YouTube series, go to A Hero's Journey with Dr. D.com. Now, let's begin. Today, you know what it is, what it is, what it is. Today is the recap. Let me put you, put my chat, my chat up here right now. Is a recap, up and coming or update, and it is the Q and A. Q and A. I'm trying something new today. I have a uh, on a Q and A session uh, when we start the Q and A a portion of this broadcast. What we will do, we'll play. Uh, for those who've came on the podcast and left messages, we will uh, play their voice recording and I will respond to the voice recording um, prior prior to answering the live people coming on to uh, ask, uh, answer questions, ask questions for me to respond to and so we can dialogue. And and let me go ahead and put the, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put the link here. Uh, link in the chat, chat session. So if anybody wants to come in, just on um, click the link and I'll and I'll cue you in when it's QA session. Okay. All right. Okay, so what we talking about? We talk about ah, water. Thirsty. All right, the recap. Okay, what was the video? The video was the mass men wear. No, it wasn't. That was last week's, but this week's video was mask in the workplace, and identity in the workplace, and mask in the workplace. Because generally, the reason why a person is wearing a mask because they're trying to protect their identity. Um, so often we don't go into the workplace with the same identity that we have at home or we display uh, at home, and so it changes from time to time. Um, so we can be acculturated to. Uh, the system, the system uh, that we that we have learned. That's why you do orientations for work, so you can learn the culture of the workplace, so you can learn the dynamics and how you should act uh, accordingly. Especially if you're trying to um, be in that spot for promotion, because you can't just act like you're at home look at the football game uh, when you're in a board meeting, talk about a million dollar contract. In some cases, you can. It depends on the context. However, all right. So I talk about mask and. Mask in the workplace. Now we we addressed we went a little a little different, a different uh, way um, this time. I did is I did the four the four fakes, <laughs> the four things of fake, the four the four horses of masquerade um, that you uh, appeared the four horses of masquerade. The mask masquerade in the workplace for the most part, and I explained it by using four horses. I use four horses um, um, throughout the episode, um, but I use um, I start out with four things. So first thing we talked about was talk about the first thing I said was you have diversity over inclusion. You know it's a big thing. Everybody's talking about uh, inclusion in the workplace, but what but what is happening is that you have in diversity. Uh, we have the you have multiracial uh, multiracial all different shades of people in the in the workplace, but you really do you really have an inclusion? Are you really are you really at the table? I know you're sitting at the table, but do you make the decisions at the table? And that's the thing. Um, but in light of the climate and in light of what pays, it's all about marketing and the bottom line. And bottom line, so if it pays, if the climate is susceptible to it, and if it can put money back in the people who makes the make the rules um pocket oh then yeah they're gonna be diverse because it's popular it's popular and it pays because when it stop paying they stop doing case in point uh the boys uh the the bus boycott the reason why it was so successful is because all the uh, blacks got off the bus and they start car carpooling and they realized it took a significant chunk out of the economy they said we got to change this thing when it came down to it it's all about the economics it's about the money so we don't need the blacks we don't need them we we can do it all ourselves but it's a big chunk of the economy said so we need to make this thing right because 
Do we like you? Do we love you? Do we believe you equal? No. But does your money spend? Yes. So that so that's all. You have diversity, but the the thing is, what's the reason behind the diversity? For the most part, people say just let's be diverse. Let's give the illusion of equality, and we'll be all right. As long as I can eat, go in my house. But suppose the diverse, the inclusion. Suppose even with the diversity, the inclusion does never come. You're not included to in anything, any decisions. But that's another story for another for another video. But for this video, mask in the workplace, you have diversity because it's a big thing. You got a lot of different. Um, it's big. It's big. You have a lot of classes, a lot of trainings about diversity because nobody, when it comes down to it, nobody wants to be sued. <laughs> nobody wants to be sued. Okay, so that's diversity over inclusion. Then the second horse. What is the second horse? I think, oh yeah, cultural theater. Cultural theater. We're just, it's like a, we're just a flame on the stage of life. <laughs> Portraying an image. Trying to do something. But who are we trying to do it for? The cultural theater is that a lot of times people act a certain way. And they portray uh, a certain image. Because they want a certain product. When it comes down to it in the workplace, it's about the bottom line. Do I like you? Not really. Can I tolerate you? No, you can produce. When you start producing, that's why I can't tolerate you. And I think that crosses color lines. But if I really have a disdain for you and your culture per se, no matter what my stereotypes or my upbringing be, if you don't bring me the money, I can bring that alive. I can, but if you bring me the money, I can deal with it. I can tolerate you. But so it's a cultural theater. You see in the video, I have this ballerina, uh, the ballerina just dancing around on the stage because it's all about the spotlight. It's all about the cameras. Can you see me at? Can you see how well I flow across the stage where the lights are on? But the true test of a man's character is what you see in the dark, when nobody's looking, when the cameras are off, and, and when the radio mic is down. That's that's not theater. That's life with character. It's a difference. It's a difference. So that's cultural theater. And I explained, um, you have courage. You have so often people... Uh, people in the workplace, they have certain, uh, they come ambitious and giddy. <laughs> they come giddy, say, I'm going to make an impact in this workplace. I'm going to make a move. Yes, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, do it, do it. And then, then after they don't do it, do it, the, they, um, they had the courage only to get to the boardroom to be knocked down and not boost up. You know, they wasn't promoted because they already had somebody uh, in line to be promoted, not because they made good product, not because they was actually effective. Uh, heaven forbid that they actually be promoted based on them doing a good job. Oh, no, 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 no. That'd be almost like right, right? So, but courage is, the mask of courage is that a person goes in there with courage that I'm going to face this. Um, it's, a, pay, a person is going into into the workplace with a lot of a lot of ambition and a lot of um a lot of drive and and they keep going even if they get knocked down they keep going why because they're getting paid and they got to pay the rent they never never make they may never make it to the ceiling but at least they made it through the door. So it's a courage, it's a mask of courage that I'm brave enough to walk in and take being belittled, even though I know what I can do. And not only know what I can do, I have shown it, but somebody else takes the credit. But how long can I deal with this? Aha. Uh -huh. And then the last one is uh, avoidance. That's when you just come to work, do your job, get out. Nine to five. Whoop, nine, whoop, five o'clock. Oh, you walking through the door. You walking to the doorway five till. Oh, you're not even waiting. Go figure. He's like, 
man. You it's just about a job. It's automatic. And that's when you start really working in your unconscious. But when even when you're working unconsciously, uh something that doesn't take really that much effort, but if working unconsciously affects with your inner core, it's not congruent with you, it costs a, r- a ruffle. It causes a, a ruffle in your system and it causes uh, unharmonic um, symphony <laughs> of um, disruption or even some would say disease, which causes an element of burnout, a, a burnout. I mean, I stated in the videos that actually the World Health Organization has labeled burnout as, as a disease. But so, how often do we go to a job and we keep going time and time again because we got to get that check? Not because we love it, we endure, not because we're embracing it, because we're passionate about it, because we just know it, and we're not working on anything else. But it, we have a face of a of a smile, but we have a core. In this good book, it said that merry heart would do you good like medicine, but a. But a rotten spirit, but a, what is it? a rotten spirit is, is rotten to the bone. A rotten bone, it just messes up your spirit, man. Meaning that it's, it jacks you up internal. Merry heart. <laughs> rotten, but a rotten spirit, it rots the, but a distraught spirit rottens the bone. With translation, that's cancerous. It causes disease. Internalizing things that you're not agreeable with in nature, it it terminates you internally. It eats you in and out. Nobody wants that, but it happens every day because we're trying to make that dollar. And sometimes we make a whole bunch of choices and we just do it because that's what society expects. But we haven't took time to find out what we need to expect that out of ourselves. And that's burnout. That's burnout. I said all four. You got diversity over inclusion, cultural theater, courage, and avoidance. And then if you can't deal with it, you just, you get burnt out. And I state also 76% of our population, according to statistics, uh, people uh, take the depression. They take their distress from the workplace and take it home. Take it, they take it to the crib. They take the stress from the workplace, making that money, take it to the crib, and it's stressed out. But not only not only that, that's 76% of that, but it says 16%, they quit. They quit. Yeah, they said 66%, they just tired. You know, they, they have a lack of sleep. You try to make that deadline. So you got stress at work. You take it to the house, then you lose sleep for a check that eventually is going to shorten your life. So for the 16% that quit, they escape. They try to re- they try to gain back what they have lost. But for the 76 and 66%, they said, we got to pay these bills. It's, how much? How much is the mask worth? That's a question I think we all need to ask ourselves. All right. That is the recap. Now, recap. And now the update is uh, next week, the video I will be doing, I'm still, it's the general concept of the video is empathy. Is empathy. Uh, uh, Phil actually stated uh, living in someone else's moccasins. Uh, maybe living in somebody else's shoes or because a lot of times we actually think that we actually think that is worse where we live at, where we have lights, or we have a bed, we have food. Maybe not what we want, but what about the person who's homeless? What about the person who's living on the border of Mexico and in, in America and can't go home and can't come here? Yeah. Yeah. What about them? What about the people that don't have clean water? So have you if you can put yourself in their shoes, then you realize how, how fortunate you are. Gratefulness is a desired quality that I think everybody needs. All right, that's the update. The update, that's what I will be doing now. I will. 
Oh, well, I got the phone ringing on me. Then my um. All right. Okay, Phil just joined the house. So, but I'm going to. Now we're doing Q and A's. And I will. And first thing in Q and A's, I'm doing this now. I'm a. I'm a play. I'm going to do the, here we go, here we go, uh, I don't know, excuse me, I, I'm having tef- technical difficulties at this present time, with a little delay, all right, I got to recommend I need to sing something while I'm delaying, Doop. love and happiness, e- and make you want to do right, do wrong. Dum, 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 dum. I think my key's off and my, my song is wrong. Uh, I, I don't think I really got it right, but hey. But it's on. It's going to be all right. Preview's going out. And let me see. Are you sure you want to cast it? No, 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 no. All right. Read that. All right, here we go. All right. Hi, Josh. I must identify. All right, here we go. All right. I put your last statement about not being able to maintain a mask for very long, even for money. I understand the concept, and to a degree, we all wear them, or at least be somewhat clean mask than the one I usually wear, which is a tattoo. I'm trying to help someone close to me, someone who is in constant fear over what others think, half a family of them, actually. And because I only vaguely remember that insecurity as a small child, it's hard for me to grasp why the opinions of others are deemed so important to some, but not to others. And can one learn to be a tad the other way, regardless of which way they may have been born or how they spent most of their lives? Does this question make sense? I hope so. All right. Let me bring people in. All right. Phil, is your sound all right? Because you just kind of shaky earlier. Yeah. Right. yeah, I'm here. Good evening. Good evening. Um, Paul, did you have somebody else? Show, uh, let me see. How did I D and friend made it? Friends that made it, left a comment on the original cast. Okay, you did. And left your question on the anchor. Yes, you did. And Phil, did you actually hear the question? You know what? I made the quest. I, I actually put the question uh, in the other platform. And I'm trying to get back to it, but I keep cutting myself out of the. Did you? Did you? Did, did you, uh, did you put, so, but, okay. I, I think I did about the four fake. Uh, what is it? The fake forcemen? You know, you gotta help help me say it the right way. It's the four fakeness. The fake, four fake like, horsemen. What is that? Like you said a guy um say it again. I can't even say it now because I wrote it down. Okay. The four fake horses. Or the fakeness four, or something like that. I'm, I, I may not be sick. The, the fakeness. Where did the, that come from? The fakeness of the four horsemen. Let me bring Paul in. There you go. That's what I'm trying to say. Let me get back over there. Oh, hey, hey Paul. Howdy. Howdy. All right. So Phil, Phil asked me. Um, Hello, Paul. Let me get back over there. Oh, hey, Paul. Howdy. 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 <laughs> All right. So, All right. so 
So uh, the four four. Um, well, I told you I got that from. Um, well, I said I um I received it. Uh, Kevin Sands Sandsbury. He did some research on the the masquerade. Is the masquerade in the workplace and used the items of the the fakeness of the four horsemen. <laughs> the fakeness. Oh, I mean, it's uh, pretty much the mask. Uh, because a lot of people ain't real anyway. It's just that when you go into the corporate America, uh, you see more artificial individuals more than anything. Uh, um, because everybody's trying to uh, uh, make, everybody's trying to be a suit for the most part. They try to be a suit to get to a certain plateau because if, if they don't act that certain way, then they're not accepted into the, into the frat. Military was a lot like that. Yeah, so you got to be part of the club. You know, you got you got to do this. So like, if you don't drink, be fake like you do. Because some people won't even hire you if you don't drink. And reason, and I believe personally, they don't. They want to see if you can. They want to see you can get down with them. But also, when you drink alcohol, your inhibitors drop. Mm -hmm. when, uh, it, especially when you're not an alcoholic. It's going. To, come on, drink, drink, yeah. drink, drink. So they start asking questions. Yeah. And then they yeah. get a little extra comfortable. My 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 older brother had an issue like that. He started going out with the boys. You know, they was cool in the workplace. He worked for a Fortune 500. He worked GE or some other place, Xerox. And um, he going out to drink with them. Then he started realizing they started getting comfortable. And then uh, started getting too comfortable, meaning that their dialect, they thought there was a couple of the brothers on the hood, in the hood. They, and they ain't never seen a hood. <laughs> Only on television. <laughs> 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 Only on television. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Oh, I'm at the, I'm at the pool." Well, back. actually, they have. They saw a hood on their on their. Some coat. people can't handle the truth. Hey, you can't <laughs> handle the truth. Yeah, so um, so we have to pull back. So I mean, so you have to, I think you have to become a, a a good judge of people, and you have to know. I think more than knowing what other people do, you gotta know how you respond. Because sometimes we just act off the cuff, and we know that if we. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> if, if we if we know that that person, Paul, we talked about it. You know if that person's gonna trigger. Um, yeah, we're gonna just cut this thing short. <laughs> I mean, and, and that's really for them and you. Externally, is for them. Peace in the workplace. <laughs> yeah, peace. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> and we know what your workplace is, so you know you need peace, mm -hmm. peace of space. So, yeah, so that's why I got that from and uh. We catch your uh your uh, the the your, your question again, Paul. You asked. Um, some people are born where they have so much fear and concern about what other people think, and then there are people like me that born just don't give a rat's behind. I'm that way. I don't know how to understand my family members that are. So concerned with others' thoughts of them to, to the point it's debilitating. Everything in their lives is about what people think of them. Are there ways that that type of person can learn to care less about what other people think so that they don't feel like they have to wear that mask 24 seven or like me in a case where I don't wear one and maybe should put one on is there are there tricks or methods to learning how to reach outside of your comfort zone? Yeah, you got to practice. Well, that's you know, easy for me. Question. I can practice shutting up, but I don't know how to like to tell my children or this or that how to not take what other people think so much to heart. Like, how do you explain that line? Like, these are masks. These are just people, you know, you go to work, you do what you need to do at work. You go home and you be yourself. But whatever is going on at work, like you were saying, you need to leave there. Not even the stress of the job, but the stress of what others think of you at that job. I mean, this is the problem one of my close people are, are dealing with. And he's reacting in bad ways to try and compensate, make him feel better. But it's still all about trying to make a mask that he thinks is acceptable to others and he's lost. Okay. Okay. I, 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 
I believe that you have you ha need a healthy outlet. Right. So we all need to escape sometimes. And I'm an extrovert, so I, I need people. I pull energy from people. And uh, it, it pulls out the best of me. But I can be by myself, too. Right. And and, see, uh, but some people are introverts. He's What's that? terrified to be by himself. He's not terrified. He hates being alone. He's not comfortable. You got to take it at bite size. See, a lot of times you're not, you're not comfortable being, being alone because you're not comfortable with yourself. Right. And I think see, that's his biggest problem. That's why he tries to put on all those masks and then constantly still feels unaccepted in the workplace, in the street, at home, because he's so concerned with what he's putting out there that he does hasn't learned to be himself and not care if people accept or don't accept. And I'm the last one to teach it because I wasn't born with that gene. Oh, I remember changing schools a hundred times with the military, the first two or three, little nerve wracking, new people, new place. I got over it so damn fast. I don't even remember what it was like. So I don't know how to help another person with that issue. I need to get him watching your show. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's a practice. You will never, you will never overcome if you're not willing to do the work. Now, some people can do the work at bigger strides than others. Right. Remember Helen Keller? Mm-hmm. She's like, um, she get off a whole lot, but she yeah, chews like, it up. Helen Keller, a, a teacher's like, um, right here, right here. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> and so she smacked her. And, she, and then the teacher smacked her back. She said, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, and see, and she learned that if I smack, I'm gonna get smacked back. She learned pain. She said, feel this, feel this. And she 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 did it methodically. You know, she's little successes, little successes. Right. And if you can get a little if you can relish on the little success, then you when things get rough, you always go back to, well, I made it this far. I I did that. And see, that's what I'm trying to tell them. Even just go to bed every day knowing you did one thing to try. You don't have to accomplish a lot. Just a little. Yeah. Oh it's kind of di it's difficult to talk to, but if, if, if they have something that does offsets their chemical balance. Right. You got to get that under yeah. control first. It's like, it's like you, you, you try to, if you try to talk to somebody who's alcoholic and they drunk, why? Right. You, it's well, not going to be beneficial. The effects of some of that stuff we're finding out are lasting weeks after the event, which I did not know was normal until I got online this morning and did a whole crap load of research. Yeah. Weeks and months is not abnormal. So. Yeah, deteriorate, deteriorate parts of neural pathways and stuff. You know, some people, the stream um, substance uses of that substance you're, you're referring to. Um, it actually, it, it's equivalent to every time you do it, it's a like battery acid, right? Eating, it drills a hole in your skull, right? So that's why you see people who do it extensive, they have, they like parts of their nose is caved in, mouth, it's caved because it's, it's eating the bone cavity. It's deteriorating. Mind so it just, before that it, happens. So just imagine if it's deteriorate density in your skull, then it's giving access to your brain to be affected. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, so it's you gotta look at the what's the outcome of what's the, the product is the is it worth it? I mean, right then when you when you're in it, yeah, I can do a much. But then when right. you come off and man, see that's my, his thing. They started giving him Adderall and all that back at nine years old. And then, so you have this entire period of childhood till 18, 19, where you're being yanked back and forth, nine months on, three months off. I think it sets a lot of these kids up for an addiction later in life. It does. It's a stimulant. I'm, I'm lost. 
just I seen the, um, I seen something forty eight hours long to is a mm -hmm. magazine and um they did a um, did a research on um the this guy he's a cocaine addict but he he wasn't doing it anymore but he said how did you get started see Adderall Adderall mm -hmm. because exactly. I needed I needed a constant high so. I moved from regular to prescribed. Now I need more and more. And when I couldn't get it, that I did that. It gave me the same. It said it gave me the same effect. And that's what my son is saying that you know because they took it from him as an adult, got it back momentarily, but abused it by overusing, which he didn't do as a child. But it was the use, and then the not use for summer vacations and use and and yeah now it's like i have this child that doesn't even know who he is because he's never had a period in his life where he was not medicated by a doctor or himself trying to make up for what the doctors had done and his self-worth is all tied into how people see him so he thinks he's crazy and he doesn't have hope so he doesn't even try now he just he doesn't even want to go on just feels like it's forever and it's never going to change i mean how long does that take a lifetime of chemical use to to purge for someone to see clearly i think it it all starts with a person trying you have to you have to know your your uh you gotta know your demons you gotta know where they're located you got to avoid it. You got to know that if if you know that if it's a it's first street, second street, third street. If you know every time you walk past second street, you're gonna get beat up. I'm gonna walk past second street. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> said every time I get, I get. So what sense does it make to keep on walking to second street? Mm -hmm. You can walk around second street and avoid it. But if you just like. Listen, I'm going to use your second street analogy. This boy thinks the newspaper that gets him through the day is on second street. You know, he doesn't think he can function without that newspaper because he's never been in a position to, I mean, high school, prison, home, medicated three months after coming back home. H how, I mean, in this society, how can you separate the person and who they are inside from what the doctors and the schools and all of the you're ADD, you're this, you're that. You get you gotta know who you are. And that takes with self-reflection and self-work. You get because you may fall off, but it's not about how many times you fall, it's how quick you get back up. Okay. You can fall, it's fine, because you learn when you fall. But if you but if you're afraid to fall. You'll never learn how to get up. So, but you got to try. Well, I'm hoping you, you will. We've had, we've made some progress this afternoon, so okay. I have a little more hope than I did last night and this morning. Yeah, I say if, if it doesn't work, you need to. You, mm, I got I got them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I definitely got them. Yeah, because it's not um because obviously you need somebody else to assist them. I'm not that I've got and you're not that person. social skills. I don't know how to help. No, no, no. You're not that person. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not the person. You need somebody, he needs environment and something. If he has a, if he's willing to, to take, make those steps. And I think he is. He's so used to running to me because I'm mom, I'm home, I'm safe. But I've not got the right answers for him or the right delivery. My mouth. I mean, I honestly fear that half the time when I'm trying to help, I'm making it worse and pushing someone that's already somewhat suicidal over the edge and have to rein my mouth in and like, okay, how do I help? I don't know. I'm not the professional. That's why I call you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see me every couple of days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, you do a Can good. Can I say something real fast? Go ahead. Still there? Go okay. Ahead. I want you to go back because you said some good stuff. <laughs> Dr. D, you doll. answered her question. <laughs> and I kind of wanted you to either, um, go back to some of the takeaways. Okay. You must go back with what? 
the takeaways, you said some very interesting things. How do you find the real you? Give me three things things I can do to find the real me. Okay. How 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 do you find oh you gotta take it you gotta pull away. You gotta realize you can't do it. <laughs> if 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 you know you have problems <laughs> the pig, Lord. If you know you if you know you have problems you can't do things in your own strength then you need assistance. You need somebody to quit this even if you don't like it. But so you got to be willing to make the steps. Now, you may not can sprint, but if you want to make a step, then you can make progress. I mean, that's, and, but and finding real you is taking time to evaluate why you do things. It's like, it's being conscious of your actions. Why do you, a conscious of your response to how people act towards you. Because sometimes we keep doing things over and over again, and we, and we just think that it's something wrong with the other person. Because we don't pay attention to what we do. We unconsciously do things because we that's what we always do. We don't journal it. We don't take note of it. We just do it. And before you know, we're 85 years old. Let time go. Oh, it, it is going fast, too. Yeah. yeah time <laughs> goes even when you don't. It's just take note of the time that you spent. That's all. Is Phil still on? Phil? It, it feels like. Yeah, I'm still here. Like you, like you preoccupied. I was like, I'm going to go back over to YouTube okay. and get off yeah. of this one so I can see everything. Oh, but you can't see me? I can see you. I can't see Phil. Oh, you can't, you can't see uh, Will? Is, uh, is, um... No, there's nothing but a black hero. I'm in the, the Melon app and oh, you... not on the YouTube. Oh, yeah, but you can't, you can't see his, his, his little city. Let me see if I can. Uh, no, I see his. How about now? He's got a black screen. There's me, a black screen, and you now. Now it's just you and me, little, and him black. Just a black box. Yeah, I thought black. Okay, you I'm good on here anyway. I asked my little question. I'm gonna sneak back to the background and type. Okay, you see the cup, <laughs> don't you? Hmm. No, I can't see anything but a black screen for Phil. Wow. Okay. Nothing. So, but I'm going to try on the other one and see if I can see him over there. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> All right. Figure out how to get out of here. All right. Okay, Phil, ask, ask a question. Oh, let, let me go through your, um, let me go through your, uh, your chat. That, that D sounds like you're, let me put, let me pull it up. Show on screen. Dr. D, it sounds like you're saying that workplace masks are just like masks in society. I personally do not wear a mask at work. I give my opinion, and I sometimes leave stuff alone, too. Really? Yeah. How so? You leave alone? You sometimes give your opinion? Okay, you know me. I give my opinion all the time. <laughs> so that means you do very good work. <laughs> yeah, see, that's part of the thing. You have to still do your work. If you're going to be a big mouth like me, you better do some good work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. Okay. <laughs> Let me see. Uh, he's referring to the four horsemen of fakeness. Oh, yeah. The it's the four horses. Uh, the four horses of fakeness. You got it, Phil. I thought. No, you did. Yeah, I got it. All right. Let me see. I'm trying to see if um I think L'Oreal was getting on here. Was it um somebody else was uh, trying to get on? They said they got confused. So I don't know how they got confused. Let me see. Did you click? Did you click it? <laughs> oh, Paul, hope your son is able to overcome. 
All right. All right. Uh, let me see. Um, invite. Copy link. Lord. Laura. Click the link. Click the link so you can come on. You can put your Bible head up too. I don't know if she's gonna click it. Yeah, she did. She did respond, but I will see. Oh, oh boy! All right. So, any questions, Phil? Um, it, you you had some really good stuff to here tonight with Paula. This was pretty good. You know, after a while, I left my bobbleheads alone. Just to listen in. Very informative. Oh. I think I want you to go put the put something in the chat for me. Give me those two ways two things to show the real me. He said, okay. Okay, I was trying to I wanted to get um I didn't know yet. Did you have to? Did you have to create a? Um, I'm gonna edit this part. But did you have to create a uh, app, uh, Paula? Uh, I think I did. I can't remember. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, because I think the lawyer she's trying. She's trying to get on. Then Paula just said that she needs to. I forgot. Uh, I thought you just clicked the link on, but think. Um, no, none of these things. We just click the link. You, they always take you to something to create this or that. Oh, okay, and that's why. Oh, I have wow. so many passwords. I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Um, they go. Um. <laughs> okay. Okay, maybe next time I can access Mel. It wants me to open Instafari. Yeah, we have this problem. <laughs> okay, maybe next time I can access Mel. It wants me to open Instafari browser. Okay, okay, next next time, next time. I I figured out something. I I, man, I thought it was a direct link, but I guess if you're Melon already, I thought it was an easy direct link. Well, I was mistaken. <laughs> maybe on Instagram is like that. Maybe on Instagram is like that directly. You can go direct to IGTV. But you're more okay, can I ask another question? Go ahead. Okay, are you going to get us all bobbleheads? Because everybody likes now all you got, you have a my terrible connection. Oh. Terrible connection. Terrible. <laughs> you hear? No, I mess with you. I mess with you. <laughs> now I can log in from any platform. Okay, that's uh. Wait, wait, wait. You can see all screens. Lori, you said you can see you can see all screens. Lori, you can see all screens. Oh, I don't know. Now nah, alone. Okay. No, I, I don't. Uh, no, I'm waiting for you to um. Uh, send me. Uh. A third of your stimulus check. <laughs> uh oh, I hope I knocked my sound out. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I heard you say something about you giving everybody a stimulus check. You said you'll give me a stimulus check? Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Lori, do you have a question? So you any, any new questions? Whoa, this is quick. Uh, is that how much um Baba Hills cost? I think um Paul was asking how much Baba Hills cost. I looked up, I saw them like eighty dollars. The personalized ones. I don't know how much fields cost. Right. 
No, mine was free. I got him from work years ago. Yeah, Phil stole his from work. No, the, the advertising, they, probably, they gave it to him. They gave it to him. I just playing. I just playing. If he didn't even hear that, he's so focused on, he's he, he's um, trying to uh, give a good display. See, that's that's a layout artist right there. Adv always about presentation. Start each day with a grateful heart. <laughs> Paul said she'd be an alien chick. Feel that kind of look like you. My complexion, but look like you. But she got she got an eye on you. <laughs> she got an eye on you. Any more questions, anybody? Okay, on the original podcast, but you know I was hit by everything. You're on a computer. I'm on my cell phone. That's probably the problem. <clears throat> yeah, it may be. You know, seems like I had another question on original podcast, but you know I was hit by. So <laughs> let's let's listen to your question again, Paul. I got I edit this thing when I do my uh, my preview tomorrow. I'm gonna listen to the question again. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hi, Dr. T. I most identified with your last statement about not being able to maintain a mask for very long, even for money. I understand the concept, and to a degree, we all wear them, or at least a somewhat cleaner mask than the one I usually wear, which is a tad more colorful. I'm trying to help someone close to me, someone who is in constant fear over what others think, half a family of them, actually. And because I only vaguely remember that insecurity as a small child, it's hard for me to grasp why the opinions of others are deemed so important to some, but not to others. And can one learn to be a tad the other way, regardless of which way they may have been born or how they spent most of their lives. Does this question make sense? I hope so. Oh yeah, I saw it. It does. Um, it was a different one written on the original cast. Okay, Paula said the question was. Let me let me let me write it. She said it was a different one written on the original um cast about how wearing masks in the workplace may actually prolong old stereotypes. Okay. All right. And I think and we yeah, because we already just we just answered your question about and I said you can't change it. And a lot and you are a summation. I don't know who this is. Delete. Um, and you are you are a summation of you basically uh, it's your ge genetic traits, is your environment, is genetic, situational, and environment. These make these make you who you become. Yeah, these make you who you, who you become. You learn a lot of things from your father, and then you learn a lot of things from this, the things that happen to you. And then you learn, uh, and then you learn a lot of things from the environments that you that you had to adapt to or assimilate within, and so you put all that together, and then you become who you are. Now you still can adjust things based on your adaptation. 
Some people are easy adapters than others. Some people take some more work. And some people, they just, they can get back up. They can fail and get back. Like me, I I, I get it up. I just take the class again. So, oh, man. <laughs> now, I get frustrated a little bit, but I can't dwell in the fact that I didn't pass. Because it, it doesn't benefit me. Now, to dwell on the fact that I can do better and what did I get wrong, that helps me out to project myself to better heights. Because you always learn. I mean, life is full of, uh, uh, it's, it's feedback and lessons. Feedback and lessons. It's never really failure. It's feedback and lessons. Now, when you don't pull a lesson from the feedback you receive from not accomplishing the task, then I believe that's that could be denoted as failure because you're not you're not taking from what is giving you. It's giving you a lesson. You gotta do better. You gotta extend your time. You gotta do more push ups. You gotta do something, and you evaluate. You you it's how you respond. So you're learning the certain things. So that does a little extra to why I already responded. Uh, Phil, any more questions? Nah. Okay, let me pretty let me good read. show. Oh, good. Let me read this last thing that Paula wrote. Uh, if people are always politically correct, it prohibits people from being able to ask questions and learn and grow as a, as a species, as a nation, as a human. I agree. If they're always politically correct, is it is a place and time for everything? And you have to assess the individuals, the environment. And the situation in order to know the proper placement of the action or the words. And that's when that's when it comes to I think it's a scripture said that John 1 19 says, being quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to be angry. That's work within itself. We have two ears and one mouth. And but we talk more than we listen. All right. Oh, hearts and minds clear. All right, I'm gonna pray for If you have enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when a new episode is posted. So you can rave and review about this episode with your friends. And if you forget anything else from this episode, remember this, that every day you get a vertical, make it your goal in life to move forward and never move back. This is the Hero's Journey with Dr. D. Peace and blessings. And we're out.